Hello there, welcome to Creepy Encounters. In today's video, the mistake I made with staying at an Airbnb. Scariest encounter of my life. I wanted to share this story to warn people, but it is not necessarily a creepy encounter. Just sort of a story that is weird and freaked me out. Please delete if irrelevant, but I do not know where else to post to warn people. I am traveling around the country in my car. I have been driving for over a week from the city I lived in and have so far slept in my car, to save money. It wasn't until I got to a big enough city that I decided to treat myself to an actual bed that would be comfortable. I opted to choose Airbnb because it is cheaper than hotels. I booked this Airbnb the day before I arrived in the city, so there weren't many options left. I had found this apartment on Airbnb that looked very new and modern and it was in a great location, the price was decent for its location, and it almost seems too good to be true. The only downfall was that it was listed as a new listing and had zero reviews. I figured that the price was low because it was a new listing and decided to give it a shot, it must be legit because it's Airbnb right? When I got to the apartment building it was older looking than I had expected. I later found out slash realized that my Airbnb was, most likely, the only renovated apartment in the building and the building seemed to be in poor condition. It looked more like a dorm hall rather than an apartment building. Anyways I let it all slide because I wasn't paying too much so what could I expect, the apartment itself looked like the pick so that was good enough. Everything went well for the first two days. As a female traveling alone I always make sure to be safe. I don't go out when it's dark and I always lock the door, every single lock including the chain thing. Anyways, on the third day I was out all morning and came back to the apartment to change to head to the beach. I had again locked the door including the chain. I was in front of the door watching TV while changing, when the door suddenly unlocks and someone opens the door. I am beyond lucky that I had put the lock chain on the door or else it would have opened all the way. I was naked and no one else was supposed to have the keys. My first reaction was excuse me. And I closed the door right away, locking it again. I came from the back of the door and did not look slash see who was opening it. I sat in front of the door scared and shocked. Realizing that this person could technically still get in here since they obviously have the keys to the apartment. At first, I thought maybe it was the owner coming back after I checked out. But I was not supposed to check out until the following day. So it was not possible. After crying for a few minutes, I recuperated myself and called the owner and told her what had happened. She told me that no one else should have a set of keys other than her and I and that she is at work and it was not her. I was scared to stay in the apartment because someone could come in, I didn't want to leave because I had all my valuables there, it was a lose-lose situation. I then called my dad who told me that it was not okay that someone has the keys and that she needs to take care of this ASAP. So he talked to her and she told me she will be there shortly with a locksmith to change it and give me a pair of new keys. She then proceeded to tell me that she had only had this apartment for 6 months and that before I stayed there, there was only one other Airbnb booking. She also mentioned that it had been sitting empty other than those two bookings because she had been renovating the apartment, which now makes sense why the building looks like absolute SHT and doesn't match the apartment. She told me that the only possibility for who that was could be the previous owners or someone related to them, isn't that illegal? That possibility slash theory really messed with me. How is it possible that I was gone all day every day and the 10 minutes I was home, during the daytime, someone tries to come in? Did they know I was there? What were they coming in for? If this apartment has been sitting empty for half a year, maybe they did this frequently? Or maybe they saw me come in and tried to do something to me? These questions are constantly on my mind. I just know I am so lucky that I put the keychain on the door or else, I don't even want to know what else could have happened. Needless to say, I won't be leaving a good review and I won't be staying in an Airbnb that has no reviews or seems too good to be true. In 2015 I was living in East Hollywood and working at a creative marketing agency as a project coordinator. The pressure of having to provide for my one-year-old son and his mother, combined with the grinding hours and travel of my job had begun to consume me, it felt as though the city were eating me from the inside out. One late afternoon, after work, standing in our bathroom, my chest began to cave in with pain. My girlfriend called 911, and an ambulance took me to the hospital. I was in the emergency room for the rest of the evening and into the night, as they administered 4 Ativan and I calmed down. Around 11.30 pm, I was discharged. I called my girlfriend from the admissions desk, who had just gotten our son to go to sleep, which at times was a monumental task as he was abnormally colic in his first year. Dot I told her I would take an Uber, not realizing I didn't have my phone or any other personal belongings. Dazed and confused from the Ativan, I stumbled out onto Sunset Boulevard and started walking west toward my apartment, which was about a mile and a half from the hospital. 
As I was walking, a small early 90s model hatchback slowed to a crawl and began driving alongside me. The driver said something, but I couldn't make out any words. The effects of the Ativan had drastically reduced my inhibitions, and I approached the car to hear what this stranger was trying to ask. He said my name. Are you Max? You're Max. He had a thick Asian accent. Your name is Max. Matt? I treated you in the hospital, I helped you. You get in, it's okay. He leaned over the center console and opened the door. Dot I remember thinking that I had never seen this person before, but he knew my name. He knew I had just left the hospital, and he was wearing scrubs. Additionally, this man was small and frail. He didn't feel like a threat. Against what normally would have been my better judgment, I got into the passenger seat. Almost immediately, I regretted my decision to enter the vehicle. It was unkempt, not the car of a doctor certainly. There were empty prescription bottles and takeout containers strewn about the floor of the car, and the ashtray was so stuffed with cigarette butts that the majority of them had fallen out onto the floors and in between the cracks and crevices of the gear shifter. I noticed he was driving slower than he should have been, at least 10 miles per hour under the speed limit. Suddenly, reality hit me. I was in an old, disgusting car with a strange man I didn't know, in the middle of the night, driving down a seemingly empty Sunset Boulevard in the middle of East Hollywood. With a sudden alarm bells going off inside my mind, I asked him to stop the car. I lived right around the corner. I told him and would like to get some fresh air before I got home for the night. The strange, small man didn't pull over. Sensing my fear, he reached over and placed his hand on the inside of my thigh, smiling. It's okay, you are here now, no one can help you. You help yourself now. You help me. I tried to rationalize this strange statement. English clearly isn't his first language. This is Hollywood, this man sees young desperate people every day, working the streets. Manipulative, gross and creepy? Yes. Dangerous, I'm not about to find out. By this time, the Ativan was no match for my fear and adrenaline. By instinct, I grabbed his wrist and threw it back at him. I ain't a freaking -ing trick. You touch me again, I'll touch you. Pull the freaking -ing car over, now. As the car began to slow to a crawl, I thought about jumping out. I must have had my fingers wrapped around the door latch because just then, I realized the door wouldn't open. And just as I was about to turn and demand again to be let out of this man's car, I realized something was seriously wrong. When I turned my head to look at him, it felt as though I was experiencing deja vu. Like I had already turned my head, but I was in some sort of time loop. Suddenly, I'm staring down at myself, from outside and above the car. I could see everything. There I was, fully reclined in the passenger's seat of this car as we fly down sunset, eyes wide open with pupils the size of marbles. It was the scariest thing I have ever experienced in my life. I don't know if what I was seeing was fact or imagination, but my abductor had one hand on the wheel, and the other seemed to be going through my left pocket as if he was frantically looking for something. I don't know how to explain the rest of this experience, but I have strong memories of coming back to reality under the fluorescent lighting of a gas station, finding myself staring at the door latch and unable to move. The next thing I know, I'm walking into a convenience store looking for a phone. I felt like a train had hit me, and remember being so confused and embarrassed that I couldn't even articulate what had just happened. I didn't know if 15 minutes had passed since I got into this man's car or 6 hours. I didn't even know if anything happened at all. Maybe I was in the middle of a psychotic break. As the sun came up, I realized I was on the sunset strip. I remember looking down at my hospital band, and I remembered about the panic attack, the emergency room, I remember the emergency doctor who treated me so kindly, and I remember the woman who helped me call my girlfriend before I left. And I remember that small, frail Asian man who wore scrubs and called me by my name, who so selflessly offered me a ride home. I don't remember ever telling him where I lived, and he never asked. I hope you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe for more real life creepy encounters around the world. See you in the next video. Bye.